And this session, we are going to look at this. This study session before we are going to look at complete analysis. This session is an attempt to understand the intricacies associated with management of conflict, identifying the component that the stakeholders involved in conflict. No resolution will be very effective without comprehensive understanding of the factors involved in the conflict. The necess what necessitates the conflict? That is what we are going to look at in this session. So for that, we are going to look at the meaning of conflict analysis. Conflict analysis is a critical review, an interpretation and explanation of what is observed and recorded about the conflict situation. It can also be seen as a process by which the root causes, the changes, the dynamics, the issues and other fundamentals of conflict are examined, reviewed or reviewed through the use of various mechanisms for proper and better understanding of the conflict from several perspectives. There are three main components of conflict and conflict analysis, the context of the conflict, the stage of the conflict, and the timeline of the conflict. While analyzing conflict, it is important that you look at the context of the conflict. It is the first step where you look at the origin of the conflict, what really led to the conflict. Now, this is the stage of the conflict. For you to understand any state, conflict, you are, it is important you know the stage of the conflict. Is it still in the formation stage? Is it still in the escalation stage? Has it moved to the full grown crisis stage? For you to analyze any conflict, it is very important to understand the stage of the conflict. It will help you to know the approach to use in solving the conflict. Another one is the timeline of the conflict. It is important that you know the timeline of the conflict. For instance, if somebody wants to look at a uh, situation in Nigeria, Definitely, it's important to refer back to the first time that they had a war as important people wanted to pull out. You refer back to the, the first uh, civil war that lasted for 13 months. It is important you know the time frame the conflict that lasted before you were able to do what? To advance an approach in resolving the conflict. Method of conflict analysis. We have the mapping method, the manual development method, the attitude behavior and context method. The conflict three method and the primary Iceland method. That's one. Conflict stakeholder. A stakeholder is defined as those men or women, group or parties who are directly or indirectly involved in conflict and have a significant stake in the outcome. Categories of stakeholders. Who are the primary stakeholders? The primary stakeholders are those people that are indirectly involved in the conflict. It means that the outcome of the conflict comes to them directly. When you talk about the secondary stakeholders, you're talking about those people that after the primary victim, in one way or the other, they will not be involved in the conflict itself, but the outcome of the conflict gets to them. The another one is the interested stakeholders. Every conflict has people that are interested in it. Every conflict has people. Some people want to even form the conflict. Hello, this slide. Criteria for determining primary stakeholders. For you to know if somebody is a primary stakeholder, it is, there are things you have to look at. First of all, the functions. The functions, the person performing this crisis. The second one is the presentability. The third one is the moral authority. Is the person really, is his presence in the conflict really justifiable? That's like conflict map, mapping. The man called where in 1979 described conflict mapping as the first step in intervening to manage a particular conflict. Conflict mapping can also be defined as graphical representation of the conflict in which conflicting parties are placed in relation to the situation on the ground. Map are used for a variety of purpose to understand conflict. A conflict mapping simply means bringing this conflict in a diagram. Bringing the background of it, like, it's like saying, let's go back to the drawing board. You go to the bringing the conflict. For instance, if you want to uh, conflict map the conflict, bring uh, do a conflict map of the IPOP separatist movement. You are going to start from the time it started, give a time series design of how it started, then bring the parties involved. Then which, who are those people contesting that they want to see? Who are they contesting? It is when you bring a graphical representation of all these factors, the causes and the factors and the parties involved. In the conflict, in the graphical manner, that is what we call conflict mapping. 
The next one is conflict tracking. It is a process which involves monitoring and observing, recording the trend of change and continuity in the conflict process. Conflict tracking is tracking the conflict. What is the stage now? Is there changes? Every what you have to know is that every conflict, conflict is dynamic. It might be February new, but the next day you're referring the other person. A conflict tracker is somebody who sees the dynamics of the conflict, who tracks and records it, and know the stages and who is at the loose or who is at the main end. But then what this person can now see that before any conflict can be prevented or resolved and can be from degenerating into a violent one. It is important for a conflict manager or intervener to be well equipped with the skill of conflict analysis. This will afford them the opportunity to understand the conflict situation and know the stakeholders, the causes of the conflict, the party view, the perception, interest, values before embarking on the conflict resolution process. 